All right, guys. This man, Gojo, is a pure menace. What the hell, man? If this guy is around, you better hide your daughter. You better hide your wife. He's coming for him, and he's probably going to take him. <laughs> I think the funniest scene of the whole episode, by far, y'all know what I'm going to say, busting into the church, all the girls go crazy. Even the teacher is like, yo, here's my number. Uh, why don't you give me a call when, we're, um, when I'm not working? Like, what? <laughs> this man just, when he comes around, panties drop. It's just what happens. <laughs> but we had a really good episode of Jujutsu Kaisen today, guys. I gotta say. We got to actually see how Gojo's ability works a bit. And as an anime only, that's really interesting for me. Because I know a lot of y'all have always been wondering how it works too, just like me. We get a bit of insight into our newly arrived Fushiguro, which, oh yeah, we'll talk about that in a bit. And it's just an overall great episode. So let's just get straight into it and talk about Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2, Episode 2. You know, guys, with everything that's happening in our episodes, you'd think we'd have a big chaotic start. But no, 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 you'd be wrong. We actually take a step back as we have a nice, relaxing cup of coffee to really soothe our souls right here. Hmm, delicious. And you know what really hits the spot with a cup of coffee? Just a side of Q members as we see... <laughs> As we see, Ghetto has fed the Q member to a cursed spirit. Mmm, delicious. And as we see this man begging for his life, we see that our boy Ghetto is just as compassionate as he always has been. As the Q member tells him, yeah, you may be condescending now, but we have Bayer here too. He's Q's strongest combatant. As Ghetto takes his phone out and says, mmm, Nice story. So you mean this bear right here? As we see Gojo pretty easily clean the house. <laughs> and guys, it is so damn funny when we immediately just see on the screen, Dispatcher of Top, Dispatcher of top Combatant Bayer leads to organization's collapse when they're talking about Q. <laughs> I was dying so hard when that popped up. So much for them. And you know, guys, the perfect thing to go with our cup of tea is a spot of gambling. So as we transition to our next scene, we get just that. As we hear, and just what are you doing after suddenly disappearing on me? As we hear Fushigiro respond, eh, I'm just getting more money. Never have enough. And it's here we see this man ask Fushigiro how the job's going with the Star Plasma Vessel Girl. Because as a mediator, it is his duty to report how the job's going to the client. As Fuchigiro tells him, you know, I'm up against the Gojo clan's kids, you know. I wouldn't be able to do anything if I just popped up right in front of him. As he tells him, you know, I gotta wear him down first using some idiots to throw at him first. A.K.A. the Q members. And it's here as this man ends up losing the race. Pretty badly too, I might add. This man tells him, all right, I'm counting on you, sorcerer killer. But before he leaves, he asks Fushiguro one particular question, as he says, you know, how's Megami doing? As Fushiguro promptly tells him, who the hell is that? Now, for those of you that don't know who this is, without really getting into it, because I do know who this is, I'll tell you now that this is Megami's father. We'll get more info on that later, but just know, this is his father right here. And it's here as we transition to our next scene, with the Star Plasma Vessel in safe hands, we gotta figure out what to do next. As we see, she wakes up in Gojo's arms, probably most females dreams right here, and then promptly smacks the shit out of him. <laughs> dreams turn into nightmares, guys. As we see, our boy Gojo is kind of heated right here. <laughs> and it's here our boy Ghetto tries to assure the vessel, who's known as Rico, that, hey, we're not with the people that tried to kill you. Otherwise, you know, you, you'd kind of be dead right now. As she says, yo, I don't believe you. Also, your bangs are weird as hell. <laughs> Just randomly, because why not? 
But it's here with a little bit of help of Jujutsu sorcerer negotiation skills. Oh, and the help of the maid, by the way, right here. We see Rico finally calms down a bit. And it's here once everything calms down. We just hear our boy Gojo say, you know, this brat is a little more aggressive than I thought she'd be. You know, I was trying to be a bit considerate, thinking she'd be a little more sentimental about this, you know, assimilation thing we're kind of doing here. But it's here. Rico actually gives a whole different perspective on that whole assimilation thing. As she tells them all flat out, you know, Tengen-sama is me, and I am Tengen-sama. As she says, you know, some might mistake assimilation for death, as you do. But there's actually a big difference. You know, I might become Tengen through the assimilation. But Tengen will also become me. My will, my heart, my soul will continue to live on after the assimilation. And that's a really per that's a really interesting perspective to have on this, guys. You know, I kind of like that because that's true in a way. They will both become one in the same. So it's nothing to really cry over, per se. I like that mindset quite a bit. But it's here all of a sudden. Rico suddenly realizes, oh, wait a minute. I need to go to school right now. As she insists that she wants to go. As we see Kuroe, her maid tells her, yeah, I don't, I don't think think you need to worry about that right now but she still insists on going even if it's dangerous and it's here after they do end up taking her to school we see that our boy gojo wants to take her back to jujutsu high immediately as our principal even tells him you know i want that too but this is an order from tengen directly and he said to fulfill all of amane riko's demands and as we see, our boy Gojo's not happy about that at all, which is understandable. Ghetto tells him, hey, don't be like that, Satoru. Despite what she may say, after the assimilation, she'll spend her whole life as Tengen-sama in the deepest floor of Jujutsu High as the foundation of all barriers. She won't be able to see her friends, family, or anyone precious to her ever again. Let's let her do what she wants for right now. And you know, guys, even though this is, like, really dangerous, I think I kind of agree with this, too. Like, she's quite literally not going to have the opportunity to do this again. Let her do it. Let her enjoy her little bit of time she has left. Because at the end of the day, that's also a part of their mission. And it's here we hear Kuroe chime in and say, you know, Rico has no family. They died in an accident when she was little, and I've taken care of her ever since then. As Ghetto tells her, what are you talking about? You've been her family this entire time. Really showcasing the bond that these two have with each other. She cares about Rico a lot. But it's here to completely spoil the mood. Ghetto says, Satoru, you need to get to Rico's side right now. As he tells them, the spirits I put around her to watch her have both been exercised. She's being attacked. And it's here we see that the competition for the star plasma vessel for her life is more fierce than we initially thought. Very competitive. And it's here as they get to the school, they have to split up to look for her as Ghetto says, all right, Satoru, you take the chapel. Kuroe, you take the music room. I'll take our two unknown locations and let's find her. And it's here as we transition back to Fushigiro. On the phone, he just says, wait, they didn't go back to the Jutsu High? <laughs> Yo, lucky me. But it's here he gets asked, are you sure this is a good idea? As he's told, you know, the bounty, the 30 million deposit that the Star Religious Group paid you, you know. If they kill the Star Plasma Vessel, that deposit's gone. And worst case, you might not get the full reward either. They might even start saying they could have posted a bounty from the start instead of hiring you. But it's here. Fushigiro tells him flat out. <laughs> Gojo Satoru is with the girl. He's the first in several centuries to possess both the six eyes and the limitless technique. No one can kill the star plasma vessel as long as he's nearby. As he gets asked... Not even you? 
And it's here he thinks on it for a second. I imagine it wouldn't be so simple as a yes or a no answer. As he ends up telling him, who knows? We'll have to see. And guys, all I'm saying is, is that they're really building this man up. <laughs> I really hope he lives up to those expectations, which I'm pretty sure he will. But we'll see soon enough, hopefully. And it's here as we transition back to the school and we see Ghetto looking for Rico. We see he's suddenly confronted by a, another sorcerer. Funny enough, another spirit user like him. As Ghetto instantly realizes that this man has experienced. And we see the other sorcerer realize that, wait a minute, you have curse manipulation. As Ghetto tells him, living a long life has its perks, I see. And I kind of really love how this other curse user is so analytical. He's trying to figure out Ghetto as he deduces that, okay, judging by everything I know right now from what I see, this man looks like he doesn't want to fight himself. Close range combat is his weakness. So as our fight starts and Ghetto uses a powerful spirit right off the bat, he thinks he's won right away. But it's here as he comes jumping in through the window, we see that it was a part of his plan. And as he attacks Ghetto for close range, we suddenly see a dog? And it's here, we see this other sorcerer start reminiscing on his old days of his past and his good old friend Taichi the dog. <laughs> now you might be wondering, this is mega random. Well, as we transition back to real time, Ghetto's beating the dog shit out of him. I mean beating the hell out of him, guys. As we realize, oh wait a minute, his life just flashed before his eyes. <laughs> that was a great scene. He beat his ass so quick his life flashed before his eyes before he even realized it. <laughs> As Ghetto reveals to him that, ah, I knew you were itching to getting close the whole time, right? As he tells him, those with a set means of victory will easily jump on the chance when you give them that opening. Really showing that Ghetto truly outsmarted him right here. And it's here as we transition to our boy Gojo, busting into the chapel. We see that Rico is mortified that this man is here right now. The other girls that are there with her, not so much. They start swooning, saying, hey, take your glasses off. And as this man does, you can just hear the sound of all the panties dropping in the room. Like, good lord. <laughs> this man starts composing for them. <laughs> I love Gojo. This fucking fool. <laughs> as we see, the teacher even wants to get a little bit of that action, if you know what I mean, guys. <laughs> As she tells them all, look, you don't get many chances to meet people as a teacher, okay? Let me have this, you brats. <laughs> but jokes aside, we're in a serious situation as Gojo grabs her and they head out of there. As he quite literally picks her up like a suitcase and says, all right, now we're heading to Jujutsu High. No arguing. You don't want your friends to get caught up in this, do you? As we can see that Rico is clearly conflicted by that. And it's here as we see that they get spotted by one of the sent assassins. We see Kuroway here looking kind of crazy as she instantly attacks him. And in this fight, guys, I gotta say, she's got some moves. She starts beating on him right here. I'd actually argue she kind of resembles Maki right here, even with the her fighting style and stance. Now, I don't know if I'm right about that, but she really kind of seems like Maki right here. Just throwing that out there, guys. Hint, hint. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Just saying. As we see our boy Ghetto pins him down as he says, well, aren't you kind of strong? But it's here we see that this man was just the decoy. Because as we transition back to Gojo and Rico... We see the real bodies are here. As they realize that there's a bounty of $30 million on Amine's head, and apparently the time limit is 11 a.m. the day after tomorrow. 
And it's here in this moment, we see just how broken Gojo truly is, as he brings two bodies flying towards him and colliding into each other, taking out two immediately. As Rico suddenly says, wait, why are the Shikigami not disappearing? You defeated them, right? As Gojo tells her, they're actually not Shikigamis. And as he's attacked again, he tells her, they're actually clones. As we see, this man Gojo uses the power of infinity to stop their attacks dead in their tracks. As he deduces to the assassin that, ah, so yours is a cloning technique that allows a maximum of five, including the original. And with your technique, you're always free to decide which of the clones is your main body, right? So if your main body is in danger, you can make a safe clone the main body. As even Gojo himself says, you got a nice technique here, honestly. I don't understand why you're so weak. As he also deduces that, so are you unable to produce a clone for a while after it's destroyed? As he tells him, unfortunately for you, I have pretty good eyes. And it's here, Gojo actually starts explaining his just absolutely ludicrously broken ability. As he says, you see, my technique is like a convergent series of infinite numbers. Anything that approaches me goes slower and slower, and ultimately, it fails to ever reach me. When I amplify my limitless technique, I get what you might call a negative natural order number. It basically creates a single imaginary apple. Doing so causes everything around to get sucked into that space like you just saw. Though I gotta say, it's surprisingly inconvenient. And it's here he starts listing the downsides of the abilities, as he says, you know, I can't create too large a reaction near myself. And if I start worrying about vectors too, man, controlling the cursed energy becomes a real pain in the ass. Basically, it's really exhausting. And it's here in this moment, Gojo does one of the coolest moves I think we've seen in all of Jujutsu Kaisen so far, actually. As he tells Riko to cover her head, and with his ability, he's able to pull himself towards the assassin, busting them through the window. Visually, it's really freaking cool. As he tells the assassin, this next technique is the divergence of infinity. My reverse curse technique called red and right when it looks like he's gonna blow this dude away adams included he failed he ends up failing and punches the shit out of him <laughs> as he says damn i really thought i could do it this time and even rico's like yo is this guy for real right now is he for real but it's here all of a sudden as she gets a message from Kuraway. She starts panicking as we see that apparently Kurowe has been captured. And with that, our episode ends. Now I'll tell you guys right now, I don't believe that she's actually been captured at all. She was literally with Ghetto when we last saw her. So unless like Fushiguro himself showed up here, I don't see them getting past Ghetto to get to her personally but man what a fun episode Jujutsu Kaisen is just such a fun show guys I've kind of been enjoying the fact that the past couple episodes have been a little more lighthearted, actually with serious undertones to be fair but it's been a little more lighthearted than our first season was a little which I kind of like because I know this arc in particular has to end in tragedy it has to for the events of season one to happen this arc has to end in tragedy. Oh, that's going to be sad. I already know. I can tell immediately it's going to be sad. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on this episode down below, guys. Because yet again, just another fun, great Jujutsu Kaisen episode. So let me know your thoughts down in the comments. But until next time, guys, I hope you guys have a great day, week, month, and year. And until then, deuces, have a blessed day, and I'll see you guys next time. Deuces.